on cinemas and theater this episode. Courage. Or die in cowardice. Join me, Jacqueline Masharia, as we reveal the film Mission to Rescue. Are you an aspiring candidate in the upcoming general elections? Do you want your agenda and manifesto to reach your voters effectively? At KBC, we have the most comprehensive and credible online platform that has profiles of all prospective candidates. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let Kenyans know more about you, your past achievements, your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office. Office. What's more, the website is easy to navigate. We will create your profile, post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections. It's the seventh day of March, the year 2020. Time, 9 p.m. East Africa. This is KBC Prime Edition. Consistently, one week Kenya has recorded below single digit COVID 19 positive to date. What does that mean? Good evening. My name is Tom Boyer. My name is Purity Musail. Top in this live broadcast. Enough is enough. Kenyans want rogue border border riders off the road. Checking your back. KCPE candidates sit exams amid security scare in Baringo. Do not give conditions. Raila says Azimio is only open to like minded partners. Thank you for joining us. Plus, live in studio, our very own O'Brien Kimani hosting Betty Maina, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. They're going to talk about manufacturing a little later on in this live broadcast. But thank you again for joining us. Maybe O'Brien can tell us what we are expecting. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you see me here, you definitely see business, right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, there has always this debate in the tea industry whereby... The, the, the debate has always been, do we allow machines to be the top placards of our tea or do we allow human beings to continue uh, with this business? And that debate has never been resolved. But for some strange reasons, it, means it's, it seems like now we are headed back to that conversation. So I'll be giving you more information on that debate and what the Central Organization of Trade Union is saying about that debate. 
Absolutely. Looking forward to that conversation where we are as a country at KBC Channel 1 News, at Purity underscore Museo, at Tomboya24, the hashtag is Prime Edition. And Anne Wangeshi is our sign language interpreter tonight. That's right. And we begin with our top story where 16 people have been arrested for assaulting a female motorist along Forest Road, that's here in the capital city, Nairobi, following an alleged traffic accident. A video of a woman being manhandled by a rowdy mob, including border border riders, went viral on Monday with Kenyans using the platform to express their fury and call for action against what many term as unruly border border culture, which must be stopped. Safina Chinga opens our coverage tonight with that disturbing report. It is this video of a woman being accosted by a group of people along Forest Road that has sparked public fury. Our sources say a group of people, some identified as Boda Boda riders, approached the 35-year-old woman's car demanding that she takes responsibility for allegedly hitting a pedestrian. The recorded scaffold shows the gang stripping the woman of her clothes and molesting her as she screamed helplessly. <laughs> According to the police, the Friday incident was reported to Pangani police station on Monday. She was accosted by the border borders and she attempted to flee, drive away for her safety, which to our side was in order. In the event, she was cornered by the border borders and molested the way the clip is. And in that circumstance, our officers were not far away from that end. They rushed to save this female motorist. The public outrage on social media over the incident prompted action by the police who conducted a soup in the area. Police also condemned the action by the Boda Boda riders. We've been going on with operations trying to make sure that uh, the border borders don't get into. But they have a loophole of maneuvering all through. Despite that, we've made a race of so many of them. And that operation still goes on. And we shall still go on with it until when that kind of behavior stops. We caution uh, members of the public and the border border people in the event of any misunderstanding, any issue that is happening, they need to follow the law. No one is an exception. And it is also good when these issues come out because we are getting to, to know and to share. And people should not uh, shy out because, as I'm saying, this is an incident that happened on Friday, but it's been reported today. For Prime Edition, I'm Safin Aching Oma. Well, enough is enough. Kenyans have condemned the impunity exhibited by border border riders who accosted and violated a female motorist along Wangare Mathai Road in an incident captured on video. Even as police launch investigations into the matter, Kenyans want rogue riders off the roads and are calling for proper regulations of the sector. Well, the video, which has been widely circulated on social media, is now the subject of an investigation and debate about the commitment to fight gender-based violence. Here's more with Gladys Mungai. <laughs> Chilling screams of a terrified woman and the wrath of an irate group of men. The contents of a viral video that has got the country talking just hours before the International Women's Day. From senior government officials to Kenyans in general, social media was act on Monday. Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi said we must protect the roads from such vile and reprehensible acts of aggression. Some argued that the majority of riders are criminal. Something needs to be done urgently to tame the border border industry, said someone. Protective and Safety Association of Kenya, through a statement termed the incident as an infringement of the constitutional rights of the lady bordering on sexual and gender-based violence against her person. For Prime Edition, I'm Gladys Mungai. Well, we're going to ask a question. We're basing it on those two top stories that we've just um, broadcasted. The question is, do you agree with what the Kenyans are saying that rogue riders should be kept off 
the road. Tell us what you think at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity underscore say at Tom Boyer to for the hashtag is Prime Edition. Do you know what I think, Purity? No. <laughs> there are lots of benefits from the Buddha Buddha. But the word is rogue. But the word is mm. rogue. Yes. The ugly side needs to be checked. Absolutely. But we want to hear what they have to say. Rogue means there are good riders yeah. out yeah. here. There are very many good riders yeah. who are making an honest living and mm -hmm. they are law-abiding, but a select few yeah. need to be checked. What, what do you think? <laughs> Get texted. Oh, absolutely. Right? Okay, there's an item here in education, the 2021 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examinations kicked off Monday with Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha assuring candidates in volatile areas of their safety. The CS said examination papers have also been secured. Professor Magoha said helicopters will be used in zones that are not easily accessible. That's right. He said that security officers have been dispatched to examination centers that's across the country. Nancy Okware with the details of the first day of the national examinations. The Kenya Certificate for Primary Education Class of 2021 began sitting its national examination on Monday in an exercise overseen by a multi-agency team. The over 1.2 million candidates wrote the mathematics paper, English and Composition, on the first day. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha oversaw the exercise in Kakamega County where he assured learners in insecurity struck areas of their safety even as he cautioned politicians against campaigning near examination centers. So if anybody dares, we work with the Ministry of Interior. Do you think the, the security forces have no authority to flash those people out? We are asking them very politely to go to other venues. <laughs> In Nairobi County, Interior Principal Secretary Karanja Kibicho was also at hand to assure learners that the government will oversee a seamless exercise. We have ensured that uh, there isn't a chance of anyone to tamper with it. You would have to coordinate uh, hundreds of people to succeed. Kibicho's sentiments were echoed by Rift Valley Coordinator Mohamed Malim and Coast Regional Commissioner John Elungata. We have restored the integrity of Kenya's exams and we shouldn't lose it now that we are we are advancing in it in Westland sub county two candidates are writing their exams in hospital uh, there are people who are going to those hospitals uh, to administer the exam there uh, so the issue has been taken care of a candidate in Kisi County, too, is confined to a maternity ward after giving birth just hours to the D-Day. The delivery was normal. The candidate is stable. He's at Kisi Level 6, Hockton. Again, arrangements have been made to ensure that she takes her exams. A few kilometers at Kiongongi Primary School, a classroom went up in flames before the commencement of the examinations. Now the head teacher explains very clearly that they don't use gas in this school for any activity. So how the gas cylinder found its way into, into the school compound and into the classroom is something that the investigating officers will probably help us unravel. Fifteen inmates at the Kitui GK prison and 20 others in Naivasha are also sitting the national examinations, some of whom are serving life sentences. When we saw my Paka Sanadi Seven, Nikashi and Kiwalaya, I can keep on Gia Padipo to say a quamba, Rubesa Umimua Masom, Mimi Nikashukoya to Alicia Ku and Mukunga Masha, Nikamu Kwendiana Masom, Ninataraja Kwamba, Nipata Lama, Sidia two to seven DV, Galao, Siju, Sijawai Kofani, Nikania Taraza Lanan. In Mandera County, security has been beefed up to ensure a smooth examination exercise. Mandera County Director of Education, Abdi Sheikh, says the examination will be airlifted to all centers that are facing security challenges. Oh, we have no much challenge. The NEC and the government have taken everything taken care of, okay? So I think things will go very well as planned. Migori County Commissioner Meru Mwangi has refuted claims that Migori is a hotspot for exam irregularities. 
Mwangi says all measures are in place to ensure a credible exercise. On Tuesday, the candidates will write the science paper in the morning, followed by Kiswahili, then Insha in the afternoon. On the first day of the KCP examination, the multi-agency team overseeing the exercise across the country has maintained that no candidate will miss the examination, including those in the volatile regions. Lance Okware, reporting for Prime Edition from St. George's Primary School, Nairobi. Thank you so much, Nancy Okware. Let's stay with the KCPE story. The Kenya Certificate of Primary Education exams were disrupted in two schools in Baringo County following an attack by armed bandits. Candidates from two schools in Muchungoi area were forced to abandon the exams after gunmen exchanged fire with security forces near the examination centers. Several houses were torched and a motorbike burnt during the attack. There were no casualties reported in the two schools. Schools. The government is assuring parents and KCPE candidates mm. in Baringo County of enhanced surveillance. Ben Chumba has that report. Days after six people were killed by armed bandits in Baringo South, the bandits struck again on Monday, this time disrupting the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education KCP exams in at least two schools. The candidates from the schools in Kapsukum, Mochongoi, Baringo County, were forced to flee after gunmen who launched attacks near the examination centers exchanged fire with security forces. That what is happening in Mochongoi is no longer cattle rustling. It is no longer robbery. What is happening in Mochongoi is massacre. We saw masses of people running away from the region. In fact, the whole place is becoming... Uh, it is becoming just a wilderness because nobody is there now. Several houses were torched and a motorbike burnt during the attack. Tunaulisa international community. Waingilie hii shida ya insecurity hapa Paringo. The government has set up examination centers in safe areas to avert the likelihood of more candidates who could miss the national examination. Tumefanya mikakati kuhakikisha ya kuwa watoto wetu wamepewa nafasi kama wa Kenya wengine kwenda kukalia mitihani yao. Kwa hivyo tumejipanga na usalama ya hali ya juu itapatikana katika kila sehemu ya hizo mashule. Candidates of Sinoni Primary School, Kasiela Primary School, Arabal Primary School, Kapinda Sum Primary School and Kapkechir Primary School are writing the exams at Mochongoi Secondary School. While in Baringo North, pupils of Kapturo Primary School and Chepkesin Primary are being hosted at Toboroi Primary School. On Saturday, seven people were killed by armed bandits in the two volatile regions of Baringo South and Baringo North, creating tension which has seen scores moving to safer areas. Ben Chumba, Prime Edition. Well, from security matters or better still lack of it, let's move on. Interior, Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi says some top government officials are the biggest beneficiaries of irregular acquisition of government as well as public land. Matiangi says that among the most affected is the prison's department, which has lost large, huge parcels of land through the syndicate. The department is now looking to repossess the grabbed parcels after taking stock of what it has lost over the years. Zainab Said reports. Speaking at the prison staff training college in Riru, Kiambu County, Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi said the prison's department had finished compiling a report on the land it owned, ready to be handed to the National Lands Commission for action. We, we, we should ask some of these people if they have any conscience left to, to think about, not today, think about Kenya tomorrow. Matiangi said Yata, Eldoret and Kapsabet are among the prisons largely affected by land grabbing. And it's rotating very nicely. Meanwhile, the National Land Commission, in collaboration with Food and Agriculture Organization and the European Union, have moved to provide guidance on how to engage with communities while undertaking large-scale land acquisition. The issue of the land fragmentation is an emerging concern 
and we have experienced land buying companies subdividing land in asal areas to an economical zone science. It was therefore important for the Commission to research on the effect of land fragmentation on land use and food security in 13 counties in Kenya. Already a pilot process has been done in 13 counties. The National Land Commission is recommending transparency during negotiations, compliance to environmental standards and food security, among others, before land acquisition. Much you go about legislating, however much you go about uh, planning, a lot of the fragmentation is actually, and I know this from experience in my area, is actually uh, not formal. A lot of that fragmentation would not have been through physical planning, it would not have been through even formal subdivision. It would be a scenario where the father has divided his land to his sons and they have, they have put up fences and they are relaxed there. They have not done any formal subdivision. The European Union and Food and Agriculture Organization have pledged their continued support for the project which will soon be launched in all the 47 counties. With an EU contribution of 10 million euros, which is 1.35 billion Kenyan shillings, and an FAO contribution of um, 60 million Kenyan shillings. How to build a food secure country free from hunger and malnutrition. And this will be, of course, realized through tenable land governance practices and by implementing policies, legislations and guidelines for effective land use. For Prime Edition, I'm Zainab Said. Well, we're taking our first break and you remember the story on the unruly border border culture formed the basis of our question. We are asking you whether you agree that Kenyan rogue border border riders should be kept off mm -hmm. the roads. Yes or no? Tell us why you agree or disagree at KBC Channel 1 News at purity underscore Tomboya under tomboy at for the hashtag is prime edition. We'll be going through your feedback during and before the tip end of this broadcast. We'll be back. Stay with us. Well, I, I do hope at least that they uh, all understand that Africa is no longer a colonial continent and that we have gained our independence um, and that this means to us um, a new Africa uh, speaking for herself, interpreting herself and anxious, um, uh, ready and willing to take her place in uh, international uh, as well as Commonwealth Affairs. But of course, uh, I think we ourselves have a duty to um, inform the world and inform the Australian people of our problems and progress. And that's one reason. Log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, sports, politics, lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV Shows. For the day's biggest stories, trustworthy news and family entertainment, log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere.
You're watching Prime Edition. Welcome back. Tonight we ask, do you agree that rogue riders should be kept off the road? At KBC Channel at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity and Eskomo Senda Tomboya 2 for the hashtag is Prime Edition. A tweet from Dr. Fred Matiani, CS Interior. I am shocked and disgusted by a viral video clip of a female motorist being molested by suspected border border riders along Wangari Mathai Forest Road. We must protect our roads from such vile and reprehensive acts of aggression. He goes ahead to say, I've asked our security agents to ensure that all the perpetrators of this act are swiftly apprehended and suitable, uh, suitably rather punished for their heinous act. Keep telling us what you think about that. Let's now shift our gears to politics. Orange Democratic Movement Party leader Raila Odinga says no one will join forces, uh, will be forced to join Azimiola Umoja Alliance ahead of its national delegates conference slated for this weekend in an apparent response to wiper Democratic Movement uh, leader Kalonzo Musioka who had called on Raila to commit to a 2017 NASA deal before negotiating to join Azimio, the former premier, dismissed those giving conditions before joining the alliance, claiming it would be a coalition of the willing. With Wiper Democratic Movement leader Kalonzo Musioka appearing to have played hardball when he called on his Orange Democratic Movement counterpart Raila Odinga to honor their secret 2017 pact before negotiating to join Azimio La Umoja, it was the former premier's stand to reciprocate. Ahead of the Azimio Delegates Conference slated for Saturday, Raila said no one would be cajoled to join the alliance. Oh, people were going to come to uh, the NDC, uh, basically parties which, uh, who subscribe to the Azimio ideology. And um, it, it is actually um, a, a, an open uh, uh, meeting only those who are willing. See, it is, this is actually a coalition of the willing. And in what could expose Kalonzo to further alienation owing to the willingness of Kanu leader Gideon Moy and UDP Cyrus Jirongo, who are in one Kenya alliance to join Azimio, Raila welcomed interested parties. We will deal with those who come to us. We will not force anybody or coerce anybody to come to Azimio. Azimio is basically a movement of the willing. Those who want to come to Azimio are free to come. The former Prime Minister was receiving over 20 members of the Muranga County Assembly who are accompanied by former Gatanga MP Peter Kenneth and four area lawmakers. Raila denying that Mount Kenya region was pushing for Kenneth to be his running mate in the general election. We are not yet talking about who is going to be a running mate. We are creating a movement. Correctly. We will discuss those issues when the right time comes. We believe we are safe under Raila, Amolo, Odinga, not just as a community, but as a country. Mm, yes. Yes. And we support him without any conditionalities. Mm. So we want to tell uh, the people of Muranga, the whole country, that whatever Mushmua Laila Omono Odinga has been propagating for the people of Kenya, we rally behind him. He has the goodwill of this country and all the MCAs who have not uh, behind him. Those are the people who have lost the direction. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. Let's stay with politics. The Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance leadership is calling on county administrations and public servants not to interfere with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission's mandate as it prepares for the 2022 general election. Led by Ford Kenya's Moses Wetangula, the leader who spoke during a tour of Mathira, Mukurueni, and Kieni in Nyeri County, launched several development programs. They said Kenyans should be allowed to exercise their democratic rights at the ballot, as Yusuf Farah reports. Musicheze kura ya wa Kenya. IBC ndi yemepewa jukumu la kikatiba. La kusimamia kura. Kama IBC na upungufu wa wote, the democracy of our country is in another level. They cannot interfere with the election of this country. You must stop those games of pretending that you can form teams to oversee our elections. IEBC is properly funded and IEBC is properly led. 
hamuna kazi ya kuwabia IPC kile watafanya Women are being urged to take lead in calling for a peaceful general election come August 9. Public Service Youth and Gender Affairs Cabinet Secretary Professor Margaret Corbia says women can achieve much more if they unite to support those seeking political office. She spoke during the launch of the Women Mediation Network Kenya United Nations resident. Peter Jackson said the power of women to bring peace cannot be underscored, saying they play a major role as peace mediators and should be supported, especially now that the country is headed to the polls. The new launched Women Mediation Network will gather over one million pledges from proponents of peace around the country. Women remain in the periphery and underrepresented in the formal and informal mediation process. This calls for a more systematic, consistent, and comprehensive implementation of the Resolution 1325 in Kenya. I welcome the formation of Women Medi Mediation Network, Kenya as timely and needed, a, need, a very needed intervention. The absence of women from peace process and the mediation effort reveals a troubling, a troubling gap between aspiration of the global and the regional commitment on the ground. Working together, I'm confident the initiative will amplify the voices of women in peace building, and for that I say well done. The strategic partnership between UN Kenya, ECHO Network Africa, in their capacity as chair of the African Women's Leaders Network, AULAN, and the selected mediators will together give us what we need to sustain peace in Kenya through and beyond the elections. And you can be equally confident that we in UN Kenya will remain at your side, amplifying the voices of women in promoting peace, coherent and democratic governance. Women Empowerment, she was Kenya's first female cabinet minister and a politician who served as a member of parliament across the regimes of President Jomo Kenyatta, Daniel Moy, Mwai Kibaki, as well as Uhuru Kenyatta. In tonight's edition of the cabinet, our features reporter Richard Munga focuses on Winfred Niva Mwendwa. On April 29, 1942, in Matignani, Kitui District, Winfred Niva went to Alliance Girls High School for her A-level education. She later joined the University of Nairobi for a diploma course before moving to the United States for Masters in Textile Science Interior Design. Niva's political journey would begin in 1974 when she was elected Member of Parliament for Kitui West constituency on a Kanu ticket under President Jomo Kenyatta's tenure. She served for one term and was replaced by Permena Sanzilu. She was to make a comeback 13 years later when she was elected in 1992, this time during President Daniel Arab Moy's era. In 1995, President Moy appointed Neva Mwendo Minister for Culture and Social Services, becoming the first female cabinet minister. Never triggered public debate in 1995 when she travelled to the Beijing Women's Conference tagging along her hairdresser as part of the delegation. In her defence, the minister said she had to look the part as she was representing the country. Never lost her Kitui West parliamentary seat in the 1997 general election and was replaced by Francis Nyenze. She would be elected again in 2002 on a NAC ticket under President Moi Kibaki, serving for one term as Kitui West MP. Efforts retained the seat in 2007 proved futile as she lost to Charles Mutisia Nyamai. In the 2013 general election, Nyeva Mwendo would then make her comeback, this time as the Kitui County Women Representative on a Wiper Democratic Movement ticket. As we want this partnership in development from our own little home 
to the location, to the distance, to the location. Developing, the, developing ourselves in partnership so that there are no jobs like that is job for hard job and we know that is a job for a woman and this is a job for a man that is a thing of the past. Nyeva's husband, Kitili Maluki Mwendo, served as Kenya's first black chief justice after the country's attainment of independence. He would later be elected Kitui West Member of Parliament. Since retiring from active politics in 2016, after 40 years, Nyeva Mwendo has devoted her time to promoting gender equality as well as women empowerment in leadership. On the 25th of February 2022, she was awarded the Trailblazers Award, which seeks to commend women who have played and continue to play a big role in women empowerment throughout the country. Thank you so much, Monga, for promoting women empowerment ahead of Women's Day. Health workers from public hospitals in Mombasa County today made good their threat to strike threats rather to compel the county government to pay their salaries for the months of January and February 2022. The health workers are also demanding payment of statutory deductions to the National Social Security Fund and National Hospital Insurance Fund, which have not been remitted for five months. There's and more stories in our county news roundup by Jelis Aladi. Led by Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union Chairman Coast Region Hassan Ahmed Mukuche, the health workers have vowed to stay away from work until their demands are fully met. Tutendelea kwa hum gomo mpaka ile time county government of Mombasa italita italipa mishahara yetu yote complete manake pesa tunajua washazipata kutoka serikali kuu kila mtu yuko CRB kwa sasa kwa hivyo kwa sababu ya hivyo hatuwezi hata hatukuwezi ku afford hata fare hata chakula hata rent the Mombasa county government has offered to pay january salaries only but the health workers are adamant they will only resume duty once the February salaries are also paid. Separately, nearly 3,000 clinical officers in turns attached to health facilities across the country have protested the payment of their promised monthly stipends. At the Nakuru Level 5 Hospital, 17 turns marched out of the facility expressing their frustrations. None of us has received any form of the payment and uh, we are struggling upkeep and everything here. We are really struggling to make sure that uh, we serve our patients well, to make sure that we're giving them quality service and concentrate. Psychologically, we are disturbed. Elsewhere, three dairy cows and over 50 chickens have been killed at Uriri sub-county of Migori County by an unknown people. A month ago, three cows were killed in the same sub-county. Nimepoteza mangombe, nimepoteza pikipiki zangu, nimepoteza kuku na vifaranga. Nimepoteza dhamana ya pesa mingi. Sasa kilio changu kwa serikali kama wanaweza kunisaidia, wanisaidia. Finally, the Ala Swamp community in Sierra County is complaining of intimidation by powerful forces who are demanding that it withdraws a case it has filed in the Environment and Land Court seeking to have the vast wetland registered as a community land. Jelis Aladi for Primetime Edition. A reminder of our question tonight, we had asked you whether you agree with what Kenyans are saying that border, border, road border, border riders should be removed off the road. Absolutely, a lot of the feedback coming in. Airo Nick says that shame on all the men, uh, quote unquote men, uh, who assaulted a woman along Forest Road. You are just uh, sick men, okay. Um, and then what happened at Kimadi? What happened to that lady on Forest Road? Should never happen to any woman out here. I feel so sorry. There's someone else who says that uh, border borders should be banned from using our highways. Whatever happened to that lady along Forest Road is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Kenyan seem to be a bit upset. Yeah, yeah very uh, upset. Yeah. yeah, everybody is. Yeah. Do you think it's important for these people to start thinking about self-regulation self mechanism? So that the good ones mm -hmm. can very quickly smoke out the bad apples. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Self-regulation is very important. Uh, look at what is happening to even the journalists. Yeah. We have the media council. Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. We self-regulate yeah. because we understand most of the issues that affect the journalists, so That's it's true. easier. That's so true. I feel it's the high time, but the they border border yeah. uh, riders did yeah. that themselves because yeah. if someone else from outside is coming to do that, then they might term the action unfair. Because the reality is... There's some good border border riders. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever been in a jam and you have to come and do the news? So many times. You jump for a border border? So many times. <laughs> we take a break. <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. Stay with us. Hello. Have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 892 654 or On cinemas and theatre this episode. Courage. Or die in cowardice. Join me, Jacqueline Masharia, as we reveal the film Mission to Rescue. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Business News. I'm O'Brien Kimani. Well, the Kennedy Development Agency is headed for another clash with labor unions due to the use of tea plucking machines. The agency has said it will roll out the use of the machines by the end of this year after years of delays. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya has further said the government will liberalize the import of the system, which is currently a preserve of KTDA. Labor unions have in the past threatened to sabotage the tea business in the country if the government allows the import and use of the machines in the country. In 2017, Central Organization of Trade Unions threatened to lead a country tea worker strike after the Court of Appeal ruled in favor of tea multinationals to integrate tea picking machines in their operations. Another new round of legal battle is brewing as KTDA is seeking to scale up use of tea picking machines among smallholder tea farmers after a green light from the Ministry of Agriculture. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says the government will liberalize the sale of the machines that are currently only sold by KTDA to make the equipment cheaper and accessible. KTDA a company that produces machines already produced, tested, and is already selling. We are telling, we are telling, uh, liberalize, because there are others in the field that would want to bring the cost down so that more farmers can buy them. This is among a raft of measures that KTDA is implementing in the short term to increase tea earnings that will also see KTDA subsidiary Greenland Feather purchasing farmers' expensive commercial loans worth 6 billion shillings this financial year from financial institutions. We are seeing instead of the farmers uh, suffering under heavy debts that are very expensive, buy them. Borrow that money, buy the, the debt from the farmers. The agency is also targeting to build a 10 billion shilling tea stabilization fund in the next three years to cushion farmers from fluctuating tea prices. The agency is seeking 4 billion shillings from Treasury in the next two years to operationalize the fund. We can raise 10 billion, then we are good to go in the next three years. The government projects the farmers will earn 150 shillings from sales. Despite Russia-Ukraine war, two of the newest markets for Kenyan Orthodox tea. Benson Ruba reporting for Prime Edition. 
Let's see who will carry the day between man and machine. Industry lobby groups have called for a meeting between Kenya Revenue Authority and Kirocha Breweries Limited. The Kenya Private Sector Alliance and the Kenya Association of Manufacturers have said the meeting is meant to resolve the tax dispute between the tax agency and the brewers. Kirocha Breweries is staring at a bleak future after KRA sealed the brewers' premises over tax arrears running into more than 300 million shillings. Last week, Kerocho Brewery's chief executive, Tabitha Karanja, made a passionate plea to the government to rescue her business, which is facing imminent closure due to tax arrears amounting to 310 million shillings. The company claimed that if the Kenya Revenue Authority fails to unseal its business, it will be forced to close permanently in the next seven days. Today, two of the leading business lobby groups have waded into the matter. The Kenya Private Sector Alliance and Kenya Manufacturers Authority say they organized a meeting between the two parties in an attempt to resolve the matter amicably. Following a Twitter thread on the matter, the private sector Apex body notes that they are committed to providing an enabling business environment for member associations and corporates. However, the two bodies have said Kerocha's matter has been complicated by non-regularization of its membership in Kepsa and CAM. This comes even as Nakuru leaders urged the Revenue Agency and the National Treasury to resolve the Karachi matter urgently. We cannot sit back and watch as we destroy a local industry that has offered thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs to our young people coming down for the, just for things of, you know. Yeah. Amicable resolution that will, hurt, will not hurt uh, the common citizen, uh, that this need to be done with an immediate effect so as to make the running of the local investment and safeguard. Hibak Said for Prime Edition. Urban planning and funding is expected to dominate conversations during the upcoming regional Afri City Summit in Kisumu City. The meeting is coming at a time when Africa is battling with a surge in urbanization that is growing at a rate of 5% annually. Defense Cabinet Secretary Eugene Omalwa has said government in Africa ought to relook the financing model of urban areas to ensure proper service delivery for the rapidly urbanizing continent. Africa is projected to have the fastest urban growth rate in the world. By 2050, Africa's cities will be home to an additional 950 million people. The rate of urbanization in the Eastern Africa region stood at 25.6% in 2015. It is projected to hit 43.5% by 2050. Unplanned development in urban areas that does not support the ballooning population has led to an overstretching of amenities and infrastructure, leading to poor service delivery to urban dwellers. The AfriCity Summit set for May will bring together experts, government officials in the continent to discuss the state of cities in the continent and chart a way forward to ensure sustainable urbanization. Defense CS Eugene Omalwa says insufficient funding is hampering service delivery to people living in urban areas. It is also important to campaign for the upgrading of various infrastructure within these cities. I therefore love the UCLGA for the bold move it has taken to be holding the summits in intermediary cities, which I believe will lead to more organized growth and development in the cities. Officials say there is need to leverage on innovations used in developed economies to prepare for the projected influx of urban dwellers. We have the vehicle that will give us direct access to international financial markets to help finance critical development agenda and the much-needed devolved services such as health, water, and agriculture. It means that if this urbanization is well managed and planned and can be a driver for economic transformation for Africa, because we will be able to bring jobs in secondary cities through economic zone development, and I can cite the example of Ethiopia, where UN inhabitant is supporting what we call the regional planning process. COVID-19 exposed the need to have functioning communities with services closer to the people. Planned and controlled urbanization has been pitted as an economic driver for the continent. Remember the Afri City Summit is expected to take place in the city of Kisumu in the month of May.
Well, the government has embarked on developing a national maritime security strategy to address maritime security challenges. This is expected to bolster efforts to tap the 500 billion shillings blue economy. East African Community Principal Secretary Dr. Kavit Desai has said the strategy intends to midwife the National Maritime Security Committee and the National Maritime Security Risk Register. Desai has stated that the blue economy as the eighth sector of the, pillar, of the economic pillar of Vision 2030 currently contributes a paltry 178.8 billion shillings to the country's gross domestic product, despite having the potential to contribute more than 10% to the country's wealth annually. Speaking in Mombasa while opening a two-day National Maritime Security Strategy workshop, the PS says the National Maritime Security Strategy has been developed for effective coordination and management of risks and threats in the maritime sector. It has an enormous importance by way of our ability as a nation to protect the welfare of the ecosystem as far as environment is concerned, issues pertaining to maritime, but most importantly to promote opportunities within the context of this profound resource that we have for all the citizens of the East African community and in particular the areas with respect to fishing as well as uh, transport and the key industries that emerge within the context of the blue economy. And also developing a national maritime risk register um, which identifies all your threats and vulnerabilities and on which your, your, your national maritime security strategy uh, will, will, be, will be based. So um, this, this um, uh, workshop actually not only addresses what Kenya has identified as, as priority, but also what the region has through what is called the Djibouti Code of Conduct, of which Kenya is a key, uh, key uh, uh, signatory state. Yes, you can remove the mask. And then give me your smiles. Give you a shot up, please come. Well, a agency team drawn from the two levels of government were today on the scene of the collapsed five-story building in Kino to agree on the modalities of bringing down the structure. It has emerged that the developer contravened approved architectural procedures. The building is still leaning dangerously on the adjacent, adjacent unit whose tenants have all been evacuated. Uh, the team has produced the preliminary report, which is indicating that the building has has totally collapsed. The columns have given in, and uh, what is holding it now is just because it's leaning on the next building. Mm. Otherwise, the, the building is, if there was no other building, it would be totally down. This is a, a typical example where the developer is going to lose the entire investment simply because they did not hire competent uh, professional in engineers. Time now to have a look at the Forex and Money, money Market reports next. Well, that's all from the business desk. But of course, for more details, you can always log on to our website, www.kbc.co.ke forward slash business. Remember tonight, we were supposed to have uh, Trade and Industrialization Cabinet Secretary uh, CS uh, Betty Miner, but she could not make it because of other state engagement. We're looking forward to having her in studio in the not so distant future. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. And of course, remember, uh, Tom Boyer and uh, Purita Moseo are coming up next to close the bulletin. Thank you and good night.
are you an aspiring candidate in the upcoming general elections? Do you want your agenda and manifesto to reach your voters effectively? At KBC, we have the most comprehensive and credible online platform that has profiles of all prospective candidates. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let Kenyans know more about you, your past achievements, your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office. What's more, the website is easy to navigate. We will create your profile, post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees. Log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections. Oh, good evening. My name is Richard Munga. And now let's have a look at what has been happen happening lately in the world of sports. And with the top story tonight, Athletics Kenya has named the Kenyan team to the World Athletics Indoor Championship that is slated for the 18th till the 20th of March in Belgrade, Serbia. Team Kenya comprises of six men, four women and six officials. Winning Africa 100 meters record holder Fadan Omanyala will lead Kenya's medal hunt and will compete in the 60 meters race. Collins Kipruto and Noah Kibet 800 meters race. Jacob Kirop and Daniel Ebenyo 3,000 meters. Or Abel Kipsang will compete in the 1,500 meters. Naomi Korea and Glenn Afuna will compete in the 800 meters. And Najibitok, 1,500 meters and 3,000 meters. Our Beatrice uh, Chebet will line up in 3,000 meters race. Tim Kenya, led by Banaba Kitiliti, is expected to arrive in Sabia on March 16th. Meanwhile, national tennis wheelchair team is confident of performing well in the forthcoming World, World Cup uh, team qualifiers that, is, that are set to be held between the 17th and the 22nd of this month in Turkey. Head coach Lawrence Karanja has called on the government to procure the necessary equipment, including flexible chairs, as they prepare to effectively participate in the global event. The team has been training at the Nairobi Club here in readiness for the event, set to be held in Turkey as from 17th of this month. Speaking of the team's training, head coach Lawrence Karanja praised the squad and expressed confidence that they would achieve the best results in Turkey and boost their chances of advancing to next year's Olympics. 21 days has been, the has been really productive and uh, the players, uh, we have gone through all the paces that we we can possibly go through. And I think they are very well prepared now than they have ever been. His words were echoed by women's team captain Jen Denga, who stated that the team is adequately prepared and would fly the Kenyan flag high. Truth, truth be told, this Kiwanja is the gym. It's really, it's an amazing job that they have done. I feel so. We used to feel so fatigued, but now we can run. You can even see my wheelchair. It's so nice. Mm, change of motor ni wheelchairs. The Kenyan squad includes Raja Babdala, Warioba Matano, Kalebo Dio, Itaken Timui, John Wambua, Asia Sururu, Jen Denga, Phoebe Masika, and Patricia Mativo. The Kenya wheelchair tennis team is expected to leave the country on 10th of this month and has vowed to keep the Kenyan flag flying high. For Prime Edition Sports, my name is Daniel Mwendo. Thank you, Dan Mwendo, for that report. Now to other matters, two meet records were shattered as Bandari and Aga Khan Academy Mombasa swimmers bagged a lounge share of medals during the course invitation of short course and relay swimming championship at the Bandari Maritime Academy. The championship was used to prepare swimmers for the Nairobi Swimming Championship that is slated for April 11th. Commonwealth Games set to be held in Birmingham and Africa Youth Games in Egypt. Play, 
Rising star Maria Bianchi set her second meet record in girls 14 to 15 years, 100 meters backstroke of 1 minute, 09.71 seconds. Bianchi broke the 2019 record set by Kena Mwegi of 1 minute, 11.35 seconds. The swimmer also set a new meet record in girls 14 to 15 years, 100 meters individual medley of 1 minute, 11.30 seconds, after shattering the previous record held by Emily Muteti of 1 minute, 11.53 seconds set in 2013. In boys 12 to 13 years, 200 meters breaststroke, Amil Muravij of Bandari Swim Club smashed Tori Proga's 2010 record of 2 minutes 56.24 seconds after registering a new record of 2 minutes 52.89 seconds. In the boys 10 to 11 years, 200 meters medley relay, Bandari's team of Saleh Ba Yusuf, Matthew Gitonga, Nail Thuranera, and Omar Ashraf clocked 2 minutes 57.35 seconds to win the race. The club went ahead to win the mixed 10 to 11 years 400 meters freestyle relay with a time of 5 minutes 50.99 seconds. I want this to be like a motivation for the younger swimmers to be more, more motivated to swim because swimming is an amazing sport like I can come home from a stressful day and when I'm at the pool I'm just so relaxed because the water is nice and I have so many people that push me I have Abdallah, I have Wajad, I have Kaku Samir and especially my coach I'm so grateful for all of them because without them I wouldn't be where I am uh, The we challenges has always been uh, um, the sponsorship of these we events I mean uh, Coast uh, Amateur Swimming Association uh, is comprised of volunteers who just volunteer their time so getting sponsorship to be able to run a, a, a gala in a very, very poor manner, including giving awards, monetary ads to the winners, will really be welcomed. But over and above that, we want to say it's been fantastic. Uh, we thank God for everything that's happened so far. The championship was used to prepare swimmers for the Nairobi Swimming Championship, slated for April 11, Commonwealth Games set to be held in Birmingham, and Africa Youth Games in Egypt. Now, globally, the International Gymnastic Federation is investigating Russian gymnast Ivan Kuliak after wearing a national war zim, uh, symbol, that is Z or Z, on his chest as he stood next to a Ukrainian rival on the podium in Qatar yesterday. The letter Z has become symbolic with Russia's invasion of Ukraine and has been seen painted on the side of tanks and military vehicles. The International Gymnastics Federation, FIG, has opened disciplinary proceedings against Ivan Kuliak for his shocking behavior after wearing a national war symbol at the Apparatus World Cup in Doha. After winning bronze medal, Kuliak taped a letter Z on to his chest and took to the podium next to gold winner Ilya Kovtun of Ukraine. The letter Z has been symbolic with Russia's invasion of Ukraine and has been seen painted on the side of tanks and military vehicles as well as being worn by pro-war politicians in Russia. From today, Russian and Belarusian athletes, officials and judges will not be allowed to take part in FIG competitions or FIG sanctioned competitions. Now, back home, the 2022 Kenya Hockey League season began in earnest over the weekend at the City Park Hockey Stadium in Nairobi, with teams ready to make a great run at the end of the season. Women's Premier League uh, defending champions Blazers, formerly Telcom, uh, played their opening match with great performance of 3-0 against Sliders. The team of Bracewell Eliana Chebet scored the third goal. <laughs> DFG Wolverines and Amira ended their match to a goalless draw. The men's Premier League side saw USIU men draw with the Sailors team at 1-1, one -one, while Green Sharks match against Park Road was called off due to a power outage on its third quarter with Green Sharks leading 3-1. The final quarter will be played this Saturday at City Park Hockey Stadium. On the Super League tyre, the skillful Wazalendo Masters managed a 1-1 one -one draw against the first-paced Jaquat men, while Technical University of Kenya lost to KCA University 0-2. For sports, I'm Nora Mungi. Well, as always, www.kbc.co.ke is where you can find all the stories that we have for you tonight as well as the other sports update. Uh, but for now, that's it for me and the entire sports desk. Do have a good night. I'm Richard Munga. But don't go too far. Piriti Museo and Tom Boyer are on the other side of the studio. Good night. Thanks, Richard. The question we had asked you tonight was whether you agree 
um, with uh, Kenyans. Kenyans were really upset mm. and they were saying that Boda Boda, rogue Boda Boda riders should be, you know, kept off the road. Yeah, and those are some of the views from Kenyans that Channel One reached out to them and ask them that question but we also see Kenyans on social media so upset mm -hmm. about what happened and of course we just uh, read a tweet from uh, Interior CS. CS yeah. Yes so we let me just sample a few of them before we wrap up. Uh, Bra Bravin Yuri the forest the forest road incident must be the last we hear about border border people harassing Kenyans this hard uh, mentality they have should be stopped that is a very traumatizing ordeal of the lady and his sexual assault. The police should arrest those guys and tough measures slapped on them. And then there is someone else uh, saying, Jerry, a young woman accosted by motorbike riders on Forest Road. You can see them actually uh, roughing her up. We have a country, we as a country have allowed border borders to be a law unto themselves. Her screams of terror and fear are telling a story of how we invalidate women. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing as we wrap up. Three, three quick points. Border borders, number one, they provide livelihoods for the unemployed youth. Number two, uh, you are able to penetrate those deep locations, the ones that, you know, you'd ordinarily not get to. And number mm -hmm. three, I think it's a good alternative for beating down. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's important for them to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are good people. But there's a sizable number who are denting the image of the good people. We should have a look at the impact. Yeah. The, is it positive or negative? Sometimes the good ones, yeah. the bad ones, the bad apples, can spoil. Yeah. There was a special <laughs> unit that P.S. Kibicho said, yeah. I think sometime last year. I wonder, mm. you know. But if, for example, you hit a, a rider, you drive to the nearest police for station. For the wayward. For the rogue border yeah. borders, there was a special unit mm. that was put in place, yeah. and uh, to be interesting to see, you know, how much they have done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and of course, personally, I condemn it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes the two of us. <laughs> You're really upset, <laughs> but it shall be well. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll. they'll Thank you. The, so the long arm of the law will catch up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs> we have to wrap it up yeah. for watching Prime Edition this uh, Monday night. I'm Purity Musel. <laughs> Anwan Geshe has been a sign language interpreter to all women. Happy Women's Day. Ahead of the World Women's Day tomorrow. My name is Tom Boya from Nairobi, Kenya. Good night. Kupata skiza tune ya sitoki jikoni kwenye simu yako, dial star 811 star 816 hash. We, umeingaje kwa hii jikoni? We, wachana bwana, we, uji tulitoke wapu. Wachana sa wene, toka hapa. Wacha upuzi yako yu, toka inge bwana. Hii jikoni ni kwa hapa ndani. Na nitaka hapa ili make decision. Wacha manino yako bwana, toka inge bwana. We, unajua tulijenga hapa watu wawili hii jikoni. We, ni kwekwa kata nikuwa na nikishana contract ya kufanya kazi kwa hii jikoni. We, toka bwana, wacha. Kupata skiza tune hiyo ya sitoki jikoni, dial star 811 star 8 one six hash. On cinemas and theater, this episode courage or die in cowardice. Join me, Jacqueline Masharia, as we reveal the film Mission to Rescue. I did something stupid. Then, what are you talking about? It seems like 
He's not going to agree to your divorce with Pinky. You said you wanted to marry Helen, but you were meeting with Shannon in secret and colluding with her to fool me. I didn't expect you'd return my kindness like this. You even tried to take what belongs to Pauline. It won't be long now, and we'll be staying with Dad. Yeah, I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> Now I'm a cooler. Now I'm a cooler. Eh? You know, it's such a vibe to be an artist in the 254 because mm. you can sing about anything the following day in a trend. Mm, I think it's artists generally. They just mm. have this. I mean, they have a leeway with so many things. They can just do whatever they feel like. As long as the beat is fine, then it's just a vibe. It's a vibe. People are going to vibe along to it. What's up, my good people of the 254 and beyond? Welcome to the baddest show on this side of the Sahara. What's poppin'? And of course, feel free like a boss to tell your homies, your homies to tell their homies that the legendary show is on, baby. Yes, and we have so much in store for you from the stories that happened over the week. That is what has been trending throughout the entire Entire week, as well as the events that went down, that plus so much more. Absolutely, Miss Miss. Due to Anze Nagani, I'm Nagani. To Anze too. <laughs> but remember, you can catch us on our social media handles at Jack Mula, at Vivian Dego, and of course at KBC Channel One. Yes, and you know what this right here is? Grab vine, baby. What you gotta do? All right, we are starting off a show on a high note. Fans, friends, family, and lovers of Nyatiti Sound converge at the Alliance Francais on the Shockers Wednesday to celebrate the life of the legendary Nyatiti icon, Hayub Ogada. Let's check it out. This wasn't just any ordinary concert. It was a celebration of the life and legacy of one man, Job Seda, popularly known as Ayu Bogada. The Kenyan musician was barely recognized in his own country until his death on February 1st, 2019. I know! Other than playing Koth Biro on repeat in our houses and radio stations, we needed something more to remember him by. Thankfully, Nyatete stars and friends of Ayub organized a free tribute concert to honor the forgotten legend. <laughs> Yeah, because a guy called Ayubo Gada, I met him, I listened to him, and apart from anything else, huh, if you hear music, I'm a filmmaker, if you hear any music without Ayubo Gada, what are you talking about? I like traditional songs, and I came to have fun with the Hohangla, the Orutu, the... Wednesday, 27th February, by 7 p.m., the Allianz Francais Garden was so full you could barely find an empty set. 
All these people were brought together by a man whom many had never met, but were touched by his soulful Luo music. Throughout the next three hours, we encountered artists who had been inspired by Ayu Bogada, the first Kenyan musician to put the Nyatiti on the global stage. Ayub also changed the original style of playing the instrument from the ground to his lap. This has allowed women to play the instrument easily. It was once a taboo for women to touch the natite, let alone play it. Rather than being a melancholic night, the tribute concert turned out to be a wild celebration of authentic Kenyan music. The ecstatic crowd danced to the beat of their hangla or hangla drums, the benga guitar, the shrill orutu, and melodic natete. <laughs> To close the concert, they performed covers of their Ayub favorites, Ondiek and Kothbiru. Even though Ayu Bogada passed away at 63, his spirit lives on not only through his timeless music marked by his final album Kothe with Trevor Warren, but also the authentic Kenyan musicians who played the Kamba Nane that night. <laughs> Nyatiti, excellence. On our link-up segment, we got to link up with Eric Komondi, who paid a courtesy call to the management of KBC, where he wanted to talk to uh, the management about the 75% local airplay for, you know, local artists to just get that airplay, for them to be able to, you know, have their content out there, not try and compete with Nigerians and Tanzanians. How about we listen in and find out what he had to say? I had a vision to to be married by by forty, but marriage is not like like talent, yeah. Talent is a mkaleo to say me to nenda bungo makesho na MD approve, but marriage is a totally different dynamic, yeah. So muni ombe siyo sarakasi ile, so muni ombe sana. I still I'm still trusting God. Ni ni owe ju madi ameleta shida na sema kijana na zeka, but uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. The moment you talk KBC, you're talking all corners of Kenya. You're talking uh, toddlers, children, parents, grandparents. So you're talking family. So, uh, and that's another thing, as I've said, we've been discussing that. And uh, most media houses have been raising that. Because of the generation that we are in, they're requesting that. Also, as we bring content, let it be content that everybody can watch. So you're at the content that you can Father, I say, ah, when the motion be on, up hand, ama, we need to do more work as a saba usiku. So, in, this campaign is to call upon Kenyans, and we're talking about talent. We want to start tapping them from as young as standard three, st to to a lower lower primary. Kama na zaimba, to na zapo. Kama na zapepeta ball. Actually, our biggest target is the is, is, is the young ones, yeah. So that we we tap them when the Americans and the Europeans are doing. Kama ni football, like na Ronaldo, we need to work three. So that, that calls for us to, to, to produce 75% for, 
family oriented content. Wife material nikiendelea mtapata huko YouTube. Ama kikuja KBC lazima iende iende hiyo direction ya 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 family oriented ya. Yeah. Yeah. We want when we are talking about targeting Kenya as in Bungoma, Kitale as well as Nairobi as in all the all the corners of Kenya then KBC is the best place to start. And KBC is uh, has been here for years upon years. I mean when I was young uh, it is KBC that inspired me to go into comedy. Uh, I started watching Mzee Juang as young as when I was 4 or 5. And uh, by the time I was getting to upper primary I knew I always told my mom nataka kuwa kama Mzee Juang. Ama tama bin tama mo torongongo. You see. And so and KBC is still here because it is in your mama, yeah. So KBC understands that language. KBC has played local uh, content from as as long as I can remember. In fact, when I was younger, it, it was almost 90%. Yeah, it was one after the other, one after the other. And as we are speaking currently, KBC is leading in terms of uh, of local content. And so this campaign that we have uh, of 70. Five, the MD has another one of 70, which is more or less the same thing. Uh, the best, the best, the best place to bring it is KBC, and we have talked, we have uh, discussed. Thank you, uh, Director Kwakuni Pigia, and we have uh, we have we have agreed that we will uh, try our best to reach out to young people, creatives, yeah. And as the MD has said, we are looking for local content, not local music or comedy. Yeah, not the conventional ones. Whatever you can do. Kama unaweza, kama talent yako ni kupika ugali. Eh, utuonyeshe. Kama talent yako ni ku kwa acrobat. So we are, we are we are we are trying to find out a platform where we can bring young Kenyans and even old all Kenyans. Yeah, you know, kwa miyango, na kwa ni mzee. Na kuna kwa naweza kwa na mzee mwenye anajua kurap, yeah. Yes, so we want to bring an an all an all uh, all, all talent under one roof, yeah. Uh, uh through KBC. Yes. Now, I can tell you some of these things really don't cost anything. Uh, very little. Yes. It's just a person of having an idea. So, Eriko, what are the things you have to say about Elizabeth Omar? Elizabeth Omar. In a second, in 10 years, you can tell you about Elizabeth Omar. 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 Today, we are very privileged, very happy to have a very special guest. His name is Eric Omondi. As you may be aware, KBC has been at the forefront of uh, spearheading local content. In fact, our determination is to go way beyond, which we have already done, to go beyond the statutory content of 40-60 ratio in terms of foreign to local content. We are, we, our determination is to go to 70-30 in favor of local content. Uh, you may be aware that we have seven facilities called Studio Machinani in various parts of the country. Nairobi, Mombasa, Muranga, Kitui, Kisumo. We have Studio Machinanis, which are audio-visual production centers, where we encourage artists uh, to walk in there and produce local content. And beyond producing that local content, we are providing channels where that content is going to be disseminated. Our challenge to artists, our challenge to the youth, is to go beyond the traditional modes or variety of local content, that is just music, drama, and comedy to any other forms of innovation, whether it's uh, you're an acrobat or whatever else you can do along the lines of you know, innovation, along the lines of creative outputs, and KBC is going to support you fully. Uh, we have been appealing, we have been talking about this, and it's very important that we make this point very strongly. Local content, if you really must support local artists, ends up being quite um, expensive, it's very costly. And since at KBC we are not um, essentially profit-driven, It is important to make the point that uh, local content is 10 times more expensive than foreign content. Like just a single episode of local content per week will cost you anything in excess of 300,000 uh, shillings per week. A foreign episode will cost you about 30,000, so you can see the difference. That is why we have been appealing for a seed fund to support local production, where we are able to finance Uh, production of local content so that artists also earn a living out of it. You understand that unemployment is one of the most serious cases that continue to affect the young people of this country. And talent development and showcasing is one of the avenues that we can use to create employment among the young people. This can be done through whatever the MD has talked about, the studio machinani that is being driven by KBC. 
we have these stations where young people can go record their talent in terms of either visual or audio. And you also have an outlet. We have about 21 radio stations. We have about two major TV stations here. And therefore, they do that at zero cost. And this is what the government is doing in terms of promotion of the talent of the young people so that they can also earn a living from that, apart from them uh, getting a platform to, show to showcase their talent. And therefore, as a board member and uh, being a young person who also represents young people in this particular industry, I think I'm uh, very much grateful for the initiative that is being driven by Eric Omondi to just ensure that the artists come together and continue pushing government and other non-state actors to be able to come up with a platform that promotes local talent. I'd want to know that any time I switch my TV on, regardless of the channel, uh, the, the TV station that I'm watching, I can get a local talent that uh, continues to showcase and promote the people of this country. And uh, probably lastly on my part, there are several avenues that we are talking about and deliberations that will continue with the, uh, the, the president of Kenya Artists together with his team so that we can be able to come up with even an activity or an event that will continue you know, to build platform for these artists and uh, you know, give them a platform to showcase their talent, their skills and expertise in whatever avenue or in whatever way they think that it will be important for them to do that. And uh, lastly, it's just to call upon all the Kenyan artists to continue supporting Eric Komondi, all the Kenyan people to continue supporting KBC because our vision basically is to inform, to educate and, uh, you know, to entertain the Kenyan uh, population and therefore we are going to live to the expectations of the Kenyan people in as far as the mission of KBC is concerned and also to all to call upon all the Kenyans to tune in to KBC uh, or in our various uh, uh, TV stations and, uh, and radio stations to continue supporting us so that we can also support the artists and the young people that are behind us. What you gotta do? mara nyingi sana uachana na Kate lakini usikii mwanamume we matatizo jibu maswali yangu vile ninapoongeza wasikie basi salamu usinipe kwako pia utanikaribisha utoka hapo sio kangu kangu kwa maji hata kukuletea shida wewe utafuta eh mbona unakutaki nije sitaka tauje ukasisha watu wa amani kisa ni mali mama On cinemas and theater this episode Courage Or die in cowardice Join me Jacqueline Masharia as we review the film Mission to Rescue Welcome back to the Dopest, the Elas, the baddest show on this side of the Sahara, if I do say so myself. In case you're just joining in, this is the award-winning program that is Grapevine. Now, let me let you know what has been trending over the week that has just ended, because there has been a lot. Now, let us begin with Soul Generation's Ben Soul. Now, as he sang Nairobi, kumbe alikuwa anajua, Kenya Naimba. Alikuwa na Giuseppe Kiplali, yule anakupea pia ananipea whatever whatever. So we all know Ben 